Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India A warm welcome to you, myself, Dr. Chandrika Naik from the Department of Biochemistry at Manipal Academy of Higher Education. The title of this topic depicts that in the next few minutes, we shall be engrossed in a discussion about sweets and their metabolic fate. Let me begin with a common social scenario that relates very well with this topic. You happen to attend a party you'll definitely come across certain people who are making a fuss to go to the desert corner of a lavish buffet or a dinner party. But why do they do so? Yes, you're right in your thoughts. They are extremely worried that sweets are fattening. So let us demystify a snag that is hidden behind this sweet story. The topic Sweets are fattening the carbohydrate to fat link. Obesity is a lifestyle disorder and in the modern world we consume excessive high calorie nutrients and have significantly reduced on the physical activity. Obesity is coined from a Latin word called obesitas which simply means fat or plump. It's a potent risk factor for type 2 diabetes mellitus and when it's associated with high blood pressure, high blood cholesterol levels, high blood triglyceride levels, then it's going to be a leading cause for morbidity. As you can see in this picture, in the Middle Ages and in the Renaissance period, it was obesity was actually associated as a symbol of wealth prosperity and it was common in the elite class of the society. But the story is a different one today. Every person is aware of the consequences of obesity. He or she is extremely conscious of terms like body mass index, waist to hip ratio and many more. It simply means all of us are very very fat conscious today. Let us have a first quick view or an idea of the metabolic picture within us when we feast and when we fast. When I refer to feast, I actually mean to say we are overindulging with excess carbohydrates or excess dietary fuel that's by eating a lot of sweets and complex carbohydrates. The glucose that is so obtained is used or metabolized to produce a lot of energy. But if excess is consumed, then more than the needs of the body, we're definitely going to store this excess glucose either as glycogen in the liver or as fat in the adipose tissue. In contrast, let's talk about the body is on fast. Now this happens when it's between the meals or overnight when we sleep, Okay, so this fasting does happen. So what's the metabolic picture? The metabolic picture is reversed. That is, all the cells are going to be starved of energy because you're not taking in any carbohydrates or any dietary fuel. And so the glycogen stores or the fat stores are going to be mobilized and your cells are going to get the energy. So that's basically what happens in our body during the feast situation and the fast situation. Okay, how can sweets be fattening? What are the constituents in a sweet? Or what is fat biochemically? Let us unravel the sweet to fat carbohydrate to fat transition in our body. Sweet contains energy rich constituents. An important point to be noted here, sweets come in small portion sizes, but they are calorie dense. 
and hence we will easily end up overeating. What does it contain? It contains simple sugars. If you have added sugar, there is going to be sucrose. If it is milk based sweets, then you are getting one more sugar that is lactose. And we all know that sweets are all flour based. That means you are going to get complex carbohydrates. Basically, you are getting starch and that will also be getting converted to glucose. So, there is complex sugars also in the sweets. And in most of our Indian sweets, they are rice based. Of course, again you are getting complex sugars in the form of starch. And we all know that there is no sweet prepared without the addition of oils or fats. But today our focus will be only as to how these sugars or carbohydrates are going to be converted into fat inside our body. The term fat to a layman biochemically is a molecule of triacylglycerol. So, focus yourself on this picture which is a structure of triacylglycerol, TAG or fat as we call it. Metabolically, when a person takes a high carbohydrate diet, the excess glucose I told you is going to be either stored as glycogen or going to be stored as fat in the adipose tissue. But the maximum capacity a liver can store glycogen is only about 200 to 300 gram. Why? Because glycogen is a hydrophilic molecule, it is definitely going to store water along with it. So, you cannot store lots and lots of glycogen. The only option left with liver is to convert this excess glucose into fat, mobilize it out of the liver and transport it to peripheral tissues. Please remember, how much fat can we store? There is an advantage to which fat can be stored. A 70 kg human adult of an average body build can store up to 15 kgs of fat. The reason is it is anhydrous and one more reason is adipose tissues can go on increasing the cell size and go on depositing fat inside them as the demand rises. So, basically you have to remember where is fat stored. So, as you can see in this picture, fat is going to be stored beneath the skin in the adipocytes or the cells there in the adipose tissue, the most common sites being the hips or the thighs or the abdominal cavity. Now, let us understand the metabolic process that dumps the carbohydrate consumed in excess as fat in the adipose tissue. The sweets we consume, I told you, they are rich in carbohydrates. Now, the process of digestion and absorption begins and slowly the blood glucose will start rising. The hepatoportal system will get this glucose first to the liver. And so, liver becomes a very important organ to buffer the dietary glucose load. Meanwhile, the slowly rising blood glucose levels have started signaling the beta cells of the pancreas. And so, the hypoglycemic hormone insulin is slowly coming into the picture and helping the liver. So, remember liver and pancreas play a vital role in maintenance of blood glucose levels both in the postprandial period or in the fasting period. Liver is the body's central metabolic clearing house. After a carbohydrate rich meal, the blood glucose level will steeply rise. One of the major function of liver is to act as a blood glucose buffer. It permits the hepatic uptake of large amounts of glucose after a carbohydrate rich meal. The liver cells are highly permeable, they will start taking up the glucose and what happens once the glucose enters the hepatocytes? There is an enzyme called glucokinase in the liver that converts it to glucose 6-phosphate. It is as good as locking up glucose as glucose 6-phosphate inside the hepatocytes. That is how and you should remember that glucokinase is not inhibited by the rising levels of glucose 6-phosphate. So, that is an advantage of having glucokinase in the liver. So, remember when the portal blood comes with glucose up to 20 millimoles per litre after a carbohydrate meal, 
when it leaves the liver, the liver would have picked up so much glucose that the blood glucose will now drop to say 8 millimoles per liter. Such is the capacity of the liver to buffer the glucose load. And remember, insulin also plays an important role to help metabolize the glucose into different pathways. So, if you look at this picture now, what do we do with the glucose that has come here? We use it by different metabolic pathways, generate ATP, get energy. Liver has to do so many activities, you get energy. But you have consumed more glucose, what are you going to do with it? It will be channelized and stored as glycogen in the liver. You have still consumed excess glucose, what to do with the excess glucose in the liver? The liver channelizes it to fat synthesis, packages into lipoproteins called VLDL and sends it out to the peripheral tissues. Glucose as we all know, as you can see a structure here, this is the principal source of energy for all living cells. It is a 6 carbon energy rich molecule. Now the lysis of the bonds here will generate a lot of ATP and glycolysis is the chief pathway that breaks the carbon skeleton of glucose and harnesses the energy. And along with PDH complex reaction, pyruvate is then converted to acetyl-CoA. So, you have acetyl-CoA obtained. Usually, acetyl-CoA is further oxidized by yet another metabolic cycle called as the TCA cycle. Now, that also fetches you lots of energy. But if you have consumed excess glucose, energy needs are sufficed, then what are you going to do? The TCA cycle is going to slow down. It is going to be inhibited. It will slow down. What do we do with the acetyl-CoA? The liver channelizes acetyl-CoA towards fat synthesis. And please remember, the same acetyl-CoA is also a precursor for building the cholesterol also. So, you have made acetyl-CoA that was in excess to fat and packaged it into a lipoprotein called VLDL and it is now ready to leave the liver out into the peripheral tissues. So, again let us come back to this TAG or the fat, triacylglycerol. We say that sweets are fattening, that means ultimately glucose is fattening. So, what is the contribution of glucose towards the building of this TAG? So, let us focus on the glycerol backbone of this. The glycerol backbone if you see here, glucose undergoes glycolysis gives an intermediate called dihydroxyacetone phosphate. Now, this is the precursor from which you can make the glycerol backbone. So, step 1, glucose has contributed to the glycerol backbone of fat. Next, glucose via glycolysis, PDH complex gave you acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA is the building material for fatty acid synthesis. So, again you are using glucose to build fatty acid. Then you had many glucose metabolizing pathways, you got lots of ATP, now that is needed for fatty acid building. You also send glucose through HMP shunt, so you are going to get a reducing equivalent called NADPH and that is also needed for building fatty acid. So, if you look at this picture now on the slide, you have glucose building the glycerol backbone, glucose contributing to fatty acids. In general, in the presence of insulin, glucose in excess is going to be converted to fat. Now, our focus will be to understand the today's title that is sweets are fattening. We are just going to focus on two important tissues and the metabolic relationship. So, I have a slide here which shows the liver cell or the hepatocyte and also the fat cell or the adipocyte. So, the glucose has arrived in the liver, it is in excess, our intention now is to study how this glucose is going to be converted to fat and ultimately going and dumped in the adipose tissue as fat. So, I am beginning with the hepatocyte. So, focus yourself on this glucose arriving in the hepatocyte. Blood glucose is high, so insulin is there. And insulin is the key person who is going to metabolize all the needed metabolic pathways. What is the fate of glucose? There is 
induction or the stimulation of a pathway called glycogenesis. So you are going to convert glucose to glycogen. Glucose is going to be channelized through HMP shunt and you are going to uh, produce lots of NADPH. And as you know, the most important pathway of glucose metabolism, glycolysis. Now insulin has a key role in activating all the three pathways, whether it's glycogen synthesis, HMP shunt or glycolysis. So you get pyruvate from glycolysis. Now what do we do with this pyruvate? We are going to convert it to acetyl-CoA. What is the fate of acetyl-CoA? Acetyl-CoA usually prefers to enter TCA cycle because it has to get oxidized and you should get lots of energy. So that is the common fate of acetyl-CoA. So it enters the TCA cycle and gives you lots and lots of ATP. But if the energy demands are satiated, now what do we do with the excess glucose? excess acetyl-CoA. What happens is when the energy level is high, TCA cycle slows down. And when TCA cycle slows down, citrate starts building up. Now the citrate that you see here from the TCA cycle in the mitochondria slowly starts moving out into the cytosol. And there it again releases acetyl-CoA. Now this acetyl-CoA in the cytosolic chamber is now going to be diverted towards fat synthesis. So acetyl-CoA is first converted to fatty acid. Again I stress here, insulin is important to activate this pathway of de novo synthesis of fatty acid. So you have the fatty acid ready. Then you are going to build up the fat molecule. So you need a glycerol backbone. Now glycolytic intermediate, as I was telling you, DHAP, you are going to use that and make glycerol backbone. And glycerol backbone esterifies with three fatty acids and you get your famous triacyl glycerol or the fat. So the fat is produced in the liver. Please remember here two points. One is Liver is the primary site of fatty acid synthesis and it is always because you had excess glucose or excess carbohydrates and liver is going to be the site who is going to make it into fat. And liver, the second point, liver never stores the fat. It immediately mobilizes it out as a lipoprotein called VLDL. And so VLDL is synthesized in the liver. Basically, it is packaging the fat along with some proteins producing a molecule called VLDL and that leaves the liver into the circulation. So now VLDL is coming to the circulation. It is going to any peripheral tissue, it is circulating in the blood, any peripheral tissue can take up but insulin plays a role again. What does insulin do to adipocytes? Insulin stimulates an enzyme or induces an enzyme called lipoprotein lipase. You have this in the adipocyte. So in the presence of insulin, lipoprotein lipase is induced or activated. So VLDL will be the target. So you are going to pick up the fatty acids from the VLDL and take it into the adipocytes. So now fatty acids come into the adipocytes. Insulin has one more role on the adipocytes. As soon as insulin comes, it is like small blood buds coming on the surface of the adipocyte cell membrane. That is, we have glucose transporters called GLUT4 recruited to the surface of the adipocyte in the presence of insulin. So insulin increases the number of glucose transporters on the adipocyte so that adipocytes can easily pick up the glucose. What do they do? They convert that to glycerol 3-phosphate. So now the stage is set. The fatty acid has been taken up from VLDL. Glucose has been taken, converted to glycerol 3-phosphate. It is time to make the fat and so fat is prepared once again and dumped in the adipocyte. And remember adipocytes, they can multiply, they can increase in size as the demand rises. So if you look at this entire picture or this slide now which shows hepatocyte and the adipocyte, it is very very clear that the excess sweets that you ate or the excess carbohydrates that you ate became glucose 
and the glucose through this long metabolic journey has finally come to the adipose site to an end where you have converted it to fat and you have dumped it in the adipose site. And that's why now you can know why those people in the party were making so much of a fuss because they knew that sweets are fattening. Maybe they didn't know the actual metabolic journey of sweet to fat but you are now clear about the actual biochemical picture how glucose can be converted to fat and dumped in the adipocyte. So with that I think we should ask you some questions. I kept repeating some important concepts. Based on that I have some uh, single best uh, MCQs for you so that you can try to attend. Fine. So let me give you a first question. Which of the following metabolic pathways has a role in the conversion of glucose to triacylglycerol? I named quite a few pathways. I am giving you four options. Now you select which one of them will have a role in conversion of glucose to TH. Yes, it is not the other three. The first one, it is glycolysis. Coming to the second question. If you have heard my lecture thoroughly, then this one is an easy one. Which of the following glucose transporter appears on the adipocyte cell surface in the presence of insulin? Is it glucose transporter 1, 2, 3 or 4? Yes, it is glucose transporter 4. One more question. Which of the following lipoproteins is responsible for transporting endogenous fat or TAG from the liver to the peripheral tissues. We have many lipoproteins here for you. The choices are HDL, LDL, VLDL, chylomicrons. Which one transports it from the liver to the adipocyte? If you have heard the lecture clearly, it is an easy answer, isn't it? Yes, it is VLDL. One last question. Which of the following tissue or organ is the primary site of fatty acid synthesis? I am stressing on this primary site of fatty acid synthesis. So, do not make a mistake. Do not tell me it is adipose tissue. It has to be liver. Yes, the answer is liver is the primary site of fatty acid synthesis. Fine. After having heard so much, are we going to stop eating sweets? How to eat sweet without a guilt? Sweets in excess, we all know, will put us at health risk. It comes in small portion size, but they are all going to be calorie dense. Of course, they are depriving us of something very important, the dietary fibers. They are to be taken in moderation just to keep the mood good, but it should not have any impact on the health risk. So, it should have minimal health risk. So, what is the takeaway message? Moderation is the rule. Eat wisely and do not blame the sweets. Unnecessarily do not burden your pancreas, your liver by eating excess sweets. Sweets can cause obesity but sweets never forced you to eat it. Sweets are fattening if you eat excess and do not work out. So one final key message again, somebody asks you how to prevent fattening or obesity. Avoiding only high fat food is not the solution because you have to remember the main culprit is the carbs or the carbohydrates. So avoid a high carbohydrate diet is also equally significant because if you take a high intake of carbs then that will definitely make you fat. So, somebody happens to ask you this question, are sweets fattening? What will be your answer? Yes, no. Please answer confidently, it is an yes. Because sweets always taste good. We overindulge, because it is sweet we are going to overindulge, over it. We will wreck our calorie balance and finally convert it to fat. So, sweets are fattening. Thank you.